Hello, this is Haku Devine, and today we are going to be reading SCP-4666. But before we get into that, I know what the, a date is. I know what holiday it is. And I wish to... And I want to wish you a very good day. And I'm also very aware of what month it is, so if you, your holiday happens to be before this day, or after this day, or, or go by a different name than what some other people might be calling this holiday, I wish to wish every each and every single one of you, for or, or this month or day, to be a very festive day. So to those who celebrate, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, even though I already know I missed it, by a long shot actually. And uh, Happy Saturnalia to those who like the e e first version of this, this holiday. And to those who don't, I hope today is a decent day for you in general. Now let's get into a story about uh, on a really messed up monster called the Yule Man, or SCP-4666. I remember SCP-4666, Object Class Keter, Special Containment Procedures. Web traffic and law enforcement channels worldwide are to be monitored for evidence of SCP-4666 activity. And particularly for cases of stalking or reporting of anomalous phenomenon involving families with young children. Should a wet a not event be suspected it to be in progress, the nearest containment task force is being dispatched to attempt containment of SCP-4666. Saturn PD E, 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 eight humanoid at first contact pro cause apply. Media coverage of family deaths of to SCP-4666 is to be suppressed or falsified to make sense of here as non-anomalous home invasion murders. Forensic evidence and SCP-4666 agencies collected by non-foundation agencies already become confiscated and witnesses and Necessize. Description: SCP-4666 is currently to believe a to be a single, exceptionally long-lived humanoid entity of unknown on origin. Survivors of Wise Knox events typically describe SCP-4666 as a very tall, between two meters and 2.3 meter, elderly male of European descent with an extremely emis emis emaciated appearance. The entity, always, the entity always appears completely naked, even when observed outdoors in freezing weather. Though the nature and extent of its anomalous properties remain uncertain, SCP-4666 appears capable of instantaneous or near instantaneous travel to any location of 40 degrees north latitude, and possibly to any location on Earth. I think from my guess about the globe, that includes most of the U.S. Uh, I would say a lot of Europe, and I'm not sure about the rest of the. I'm not sure about the rest of Asia, other than maybe Russia. Anyway, and possibly to any location on Earth, SCP forty six sixty six activity occurs exclusively within the period of 12 consecutive nights every year, from the night of December 21st to 22nd to the night of January 1st to uh, the 2nd. This period is known as SCP-4666 Active Phase. During this phase, in what are termed Weissnacht events, SCP-4666 will appear at dwellings in one or more locations north of 40 degrees net latitude. In all known Weissnacht events, these dwellings have shared the following characteristics. 
Isolated rural location, home to a family with at least one child under the age of eight, and situated in an area with snow cover lasting throughout the generation of the event. Wise Dogs events consist of the following general progression. Nights 1 to 7. Children will report seeing SCP-4666 in the vicinity of their family's dwelling. The enemy will typically be observed watching the dwelling from a distance. Such as from across a nearby field or from the edge of a neighboring forest. In some cases, children will report waking up to find SCP-4666. I can't even say the number right anymore. Watching them from watching them sleep through a window. Nights 8 to 11. Family members, including the parents, will report sounds of footsteps coming from the roof or the attic, and extremely uh, unpleasant odor will also frequently be noticed inside the dwelling. No cause for these phenomena will be found. As a result, parents will often begin to suspect that the family is being stalked, or even that their dwelling might be haunted. Night 12. Over the course of the, of the night, one of two scenarios will occur. The first and most common is the SCP-4666 will kill all members all members of the family save for one child under the age of eight, whom it will abduct. SV4666 will inflict incapacitating, incapacitating injuries to family members while they are sleeping, then hurt them in a single room of the dwelling where well, it will proceed to kill them in view of each other. The method of killing varies with the event and will typically be preceded by some form of torture which appears to serve a ritualistic purpose. See Weissnacht events log below. In the second scenario, which has occurred in roughly 15% of known, uh, known Weissnacht events, SCP-4666 will not harm the family. Family members will report hearing footsteps inside their dwelling during the night. Then no signs of forced entry will be found, and the morning children will discover presence at the foot of their beds. These will consist of toys, freely crafting it from the remains of human children. See SCP-4666-A instance log below. The criteria of it, uh, any by which the SCP-4666 determines the outcome of Weiss and Ong's event are unknown. Here are some notable uh, Weiss and Ong's events, dating as far back as the year 1498. Location, unknown village in, Cro in Croatia. Year, circa 1498. Description of Weiss not effect. Unconfirmed. An entire family was killed with the exception of one child with one of the children, age unknown, who was abducted. Though specific details about the event are not available in recovered documents, it was noted that the killings presented strong paganistic elements and that the family members who had been made to suffer greatly prior to death. The Archbishop who oversaw this investigation wrote that he believed the family had been killed as part of a demonic ritual. Well, that's very insulting. Anyway. Unknown Village, Rupert's Land, present-day Ontario, Okanda, 1689. Unconfirmed, an entire family was killed with the exception of two of the children, one of whom was abducted and one of whom female edge unknown escaped during the killing so was able to reach a nearby village. She told authorities that a, break that a naked man had broken into her family's dwelling during the night and proceeded to torture them. Exact method not specified in recovered documents. Upon investigation, the bodies of the family members were found inside their dwelling, hanging upside down from the ceiling. All had been exsanguinated. Exsanguinated. I do not know what that mean. What that word means. Exot Germany, 1913. An entire family was killed, the exception of the youngest child, male, age three, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and five other children were found inside a stable adjoining adjoining their uh, dwelling. They had been restrained by having knives, pitchforks, and other sharp implements forced through their palms with their hands and into the walls of the stable before having their tongues removed, leading to hemorrhaging and death. Blood from the family members had and used to paint elaborate patterns of unknown meaning on the hides of the mule, goat, and two cows present in the stable. The animals themselves were not harmed. Neighbors told authorities that in the week preceding the killings, the father of the family had mentioned Buying tracks in the snow around the family's dwelling, which appeared to have been made by bare human feet.
Playos, Soviet Union, 1956. An entire family was killed with the exception of the youngest child, male, age 4, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and one other child were found in the living room of their house. They had been restrained and their feet it had over the flames in the fireplace for an extended period of time, kept alcening the tissues of the feet and exposing the bones. They then had their heads crushed with an unknown heavy implement. Hundreds of bite marks believed to have been inflicted post-mortem were found on each of the bodies. Analysis of recovery or release photographs have shown that the size, shape, and configuration of SCP-4666 teeth do not match those of a human being or of any known animal. Branches cut from a fir tree outside the house had also been placed over the bodies is, is for unknown purposes. It's good enough. As happened, I'm not sure if I said that right. Norway. 1971. An entire family was killed, with the exception of the second youngest child, female age 5, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and two other children were found in the basement of their house. Each had one limb pulled off by brute force before being stabbed precisely 39 times with an unknown sharp implement, possibly a piece of bone from one of the removed limbs, resulting in a massive blood loss and death. The family members had been eviscerated, and there are small, large testes removed and cut into 30 to 50 centimeter long pieces. These have been arranged in radiating lines around the bodies. Pieces from the intestines and have been used to trace symbols of unknown meaning on the walls of the basement. Eglis or Iceland, 1996. An entire family was killed with the exception of the youngest child, female, age 4, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and the seven other children were found inside their house. All had large pieces of skin removed from their backs, necks, and groins, fried to death. Their skin had found not to have been partially consumed. They had been killed by decapitation with the buck saw that had belonged to the family. Following that, the family members' headless bodies had been carried to their respective rooms and placed in, on their beds. Each of their heads had also been placed upright on a step of the staircase leading from the first to second floor, with the parents' heads on top. On top of the steps and children's head on the lower steps in decreasing order of age. Notable SCP 4666A instances recovered. Location Normas, Finland, year 1811. Description of SCP 4666A instance A small wooden drum with two wooden drumsticks of any in length. Drum skin consists of a 390 cm cubes piece of skin belonged to a human and child. Stretched with thread made from human tendons. Ugh. Gallagher of Wales. 1856. A small knife. 15 cm in length. Blade is 6 cm in length. Scolded from a single piece of bone belonging to a human child. So, those of unknown meaning have been carved into the handle. Makat. Kazakhstan, 1903. A flute made from the hollow out femur of a human child. Holes have been bored at uneven intervals along its length. The femur appears to have been dyed with human blood. Bangor, Michigan, 1960. A wooden box containing 13 miniature human like figurines, each 46 centimeters in height. Made from the angular bones of human children, tied together with strips of human tendon. The figurines have been decorated with human hair and small pieces of torn clothing. DNA testing revealed that the remains belong to 18 separate children. Cape Royal, Canada, 1976. A ball, 23 centimeters in diameter, made from 19 layers of human skin wrapped tightly around the desiccated head of an unidentified human child. Resumed to be male, age 2 to 3. Layers of skin are kept all in place with pine resin. Bard, Netherlands. 2006. A hairbrush. The handle is made of wood and poorly carved. In place of bristles, 43 it, this, this human teeth have been set at irregular intervals into the handle. The DNA testing revealed that each tooth belongs to a different child. Only two of the teeth could be a match to the objective vision of SCP-4666. 
Teeth vary in age from a few days to over 400 years. Discovery. SCP-4666 existence and ongoing activity were first detected in 1974 through the Foundation's newly implemented Anomalous Signature Recognition Program. Also known as ASRP, the program marked the Foundation's first use of algorithms as a means of detecting anomalous phenomenon. But several highly similar home invasion incidents result in confirming deaths were found to have occurred throughout the Northern Hemisphere during the night of January 1st to 2nd. Extensive research into civilian and law enforcement archives worldwide eventually covered evidence of probable White Sox events for nearly every preceding year going in, in back to the late 18th century. Average of 3.1 known events per year. Numerous historical documents were also found which appeared to describe SCP-4666 actually occurring prior to this this period, in some cases as early as the 2nd century AD in Europe and, and Russia, as well as the 1st century BC in Scandinavia. Fingerprints belonging to the same humanoid identity have been discovered at the locations of all Foundation investigated White Sox events. These have been matched to a far, to far, actual fingerprint found preserved in dry blood on a recovered SCP-4666-A instance dating from 1873. The fingerprints present characteristics not known to occur in normal human beings. See image. This is a fingerprint belonging to SCP-4666. Note the double whirl pattern. Human-like white hairs were also recovered from the location of several White Sox events, though no DNA, human or otherwise, could be extracted from them. Addendum 466601 On, I'm guessing, January 2nd, 2008, several SCP-4666-A instances were discovered at a family's residence in Huna, Alaska, following the conclusion of White Sox event number 060198. Among these instances were SCP-4666-A-0960, 66, which consists of a crude, life-sized doll made from the emaciated body of a female child, to which the following modifications have been made. A dress made from various pieces of dirty, discolored clothing and had been sewn around the body and in several places into the body's skin. The mouth of the had been sewn shot with thread made from human tendons and lips painted red, with solution consisting primarily of human blood. The fingernails of another child had been glued over the body's fingernails with pine resin. These had been painted red with the same human blood based solution. Three of the body's fingers were missing. The entire scalp had been removed from the head and the scalp of another child with long blonde hair sewn into the head was sewn onto the head in its place. The hair had been tied into two braids. Both eyes have been removed and two large um, pebbles in which eyes have been crudely painted and placed into the empty orbits. <clears throat> Upon examination by the family, the child from whom the doll had been made was found to be still alive, <sighs> albeit unconscious. Authorities were not notified, and Chad was airlifted to Barlay Regional Hospital in Juneau, Alaska, where she survived for 18 hours. Two Foundation agents were dispatched and were able to interview the subject. See interview log below. Or the subject said her body was confiscated by the agents and all witnesses unnecessized as per a standard procedure. DNA testing revealed the subject had been Ekaterina Arazova. Uh, Age seven. Oh yeah, by the way, if this actually is a real person, I'm quite sure that is highly coincidental and is not not something that should be brought up. A known abduction and victim of SCP-4666, taken from her family's residence in Uvavka, Russia, on January second, twenty sixteen. Autopsy of the subject's body allowed showed that she had been severely malnourished during the two years following her abduction, which had resulted in considerable stunt hunting. Weight was only 50 kilograms, height was only 90 centimeters. 
A number of scars and bars were present on her skin, which and she had suffered uh, two bone fractures, left tibia and left ulna, that had not been reset and healed improperly. Hands were heavily callous. Cause of death was attributed to multiple organ failure, resulting from severe sustained mal malnourishment. Audio log 4666 Date January 2nd, 2018. Time 1127 p.m. to 1149 p.m. Location Wiley A Regional Hospital, Janel, Alaska. Interviewers Agent Antoni Ikuleski with Agent Susan Muse attending. Subject SCP 4666A 0960, female age 7. Note The subject regained consciousness for a period of roughly 30 minutes prior to expiring during which she was interviewed. Hospital staff had previously removed the thread that had sewn into her lips, allowing her to speak. Despite having administered a morphine drip, the subject was largely coherent throughout the interview. The subject did not understand English and initially spoke only a language that was unfamiliar to Agent Inquilis, Isk, and Muse. Recordings of the interview are currently being studied in the Department of Linguistics. As the language spoken by the subject was later found to match no known language, living or dead, all indications are that it might be related to pre proto germanic However, after several minutes, the subject began addressing the agents in Russian, which she spoke poorly. Agent Kalosis who spoke her mentor Russian was able to conduct the interview without the need for an interpreter. I'm going to speak in English because I don't know Russian. Begin log. Hello, I'm Antoni. What's your name? Are, are you going to take me back to him? No, I promise. I'm just here to talk to you. I don't want to go back. You don't have to. You're safe now, Mishka. So I've remained silent. Can you tell me what happened to you? The Reverend did not until you came to your house. I remember. He hurt Mama and Papa and Katja and Juliana for a long time and they were bleeding. After they stopped screaming, he put me in his bag. His bag? He had a big bag. Other children were in the bag, too. I think we go to other houses. Maybe people were screaming outside the bag all during the night. Each house, he put another child in the bag. Then after the night, he'd take us away. Where did he take you? Underground, unknown word. Deep. Underground? You mean in a basement? Deep. Everything earth and mud and ice. Bones everywhere. Everything cold. I can't sleep because it's too cold. Why are lots of other children there with you? Lots of children. Lots of tunnels. Lots of holes. But I can't see all. I can't see the other... Unknown word. Too dark. My hole is with Rene and Hecla and Sasha and Pa. We make the toys together. The toys? If we don't make the toys, you don't eat. Don't stop making the toys. Don't fall asleep or he hurt you. He hurts you? How? He hit you or he burned you or he bite off your, your fingers or he cook you on the fire in his room and eat you. He eat Phil Eve and Sally. What about you? How did this happen to you? Did he do this? Renee and Hecla and Sasha and Paul do this. They have to. Why? I get sick. When you can't make the toys, you become the toys. End log. Absolutely horrifying. I can understand if this story was a little bit 
tough on the stomach or the, the mind to be hearing. If you enjoyed this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to your channel. I believe that with some hindsight, I'm going to be uploading this with a bit of a trigger warning for the massive amounts of violence and sickening behaviors that were described in this story. As for me, I have no idea what I'm going to what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye and have a great day.